my next guest tonight is joining me all the way from Connecticut. I'd like everybody to welcome to the show Rich, Vincent, and Cole of the band Pull the Curtain. How are we doing, everyone? We're doing all right. Hey, guys. I'm doing great. How are y'all? Doing good. I'm doing good tonight. Can't complain. Thank you all for hanging out. Um, if we can, uh, go down the line. Let us know what you uh, – introduce yourself and let us know what you do in the band. All right. I guess I'll start. Um, I'm Richard. I am lead sad boy. Um, that's basically my number one. I, I guess the thing I contribute the most to is definitely the angst. I uh, play guitar and uh, work on the vocals with Colin. Going on, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in class when like um i don't know if you some you know like in, in like the circle in the morning when you have like uh uh somebody has like stick the baton the teddy bear whatever it is whoever has it like the talking stick that person gets the talk it's kind of like we're virtually passing the talking stick right now and we don't know who has it thank <laughs> I think it's it's on Vince or Cole. Go on. Oh, okay. All right. So passing it to me. Okay, I've got I've got the stick. Um, this will symbolize the stick in my house. Um, <laughs> so my role in the band, you know, first and foremost, is singer, but I also serve as a counterbalance to Richard's angst. Sometimes he has these ideas that are straight gold, but more often than not, he has these ideas that are straight cringe and someone has to really like drive that point home to him. And that's been my role thus far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, I'm Vincent. I'm the second guitarist for the band. And I guess I promote, I provide the emotional stability for the band when Richard gets too sad. Oh, yeah. checks and balances all down the board. I just want to point out that Vincent is also our sex appeal. Like, he is, is the not entire true. thing. I disagree. I disagree. My I man, you're right. Leo. He's being modest. I haven't seen him with the eyeliner yet. Richard sure with the I eyeliner gets paid. Don't even. I'm going to be dreaming good tonight if you tell me about that. <laughs> I like, uh, <laughs> this and eyeliner, you're killing me. It would just make them pop. It would make them pop. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. Vincent, please explain how attractive you looked. And honestly, straight up girlish, you looked like back in your very seen days. Like, I, I, would, know, I, I, would, I, I would go my, I had no beard. I would straighten my hair. I wore purple skinny jeans. It was like the worst. I actually did wear eyeliner in the eighth grade for like two weeks. And then I was like, nah, this isn't for me. <laughs> I remember eighth grade, Vincent. Um, yeah, that profile picture. If you said that was a girl, I would 110% believe you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Vincent, man. Vincent, you as a guy were prettier than most of the girls in my life at the time. Like, I'm, I'm just going to lay my cards on the table. That's either a really good compliment or a really bad insult to the girls around you. I hope none of them tune in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we, uh, we checked out a music video a couple of weeks ago um, from you guys. But for uh, the mixtapers that aren't familiar, tell us a little bit about the band and the history, the type of band you are. Um, you know, defining Pull the Curtain hasn't been easy um, because I guess you could say we're pop punk. I guess most people that know us probably know us as a pop punk band. And uh, it's kind of misleading because, I mean, when you, first of all, the artwork is a dead boy that we're a little bit edgier than that. Um, we, half of our songs, we kind of like tiptoe between post-hardcore and pop punk. So it's like, you know, the intro to this song came in with, you know, um, screams and it's really aggressive. And then for the chorus, you know, it's like, uh, it's your jump up and down, upbeat pop punk chorus. So we're kind of playing with the two genres there because, you know, we have my love on one hand and my other love, pop punk and post hardcore. So when you blend that together, I just say we're going to use the word umbrella as a, we're going to use the word emo as an umbrella to really cover all the bases there. Because if, you know, I have to hear easy core one more time. Have you ever heard of easy core? You know, um, I'm going to scream. Dude, I loved easy core so much in middle school, man. And high school. 
I, just, I held on to it way I just too love long. the name because it's so clever. Like it's not hardcore. It's, it's easy. easycore. And like Yes! It's so good. And bands like Four Years Strong, Chunk No Captain Chunk, and Dana Remember, we're getting very off topic, but just like that was a good era of pop punk. I'm not gonna lie. Like that was good. I had a friend that was called there, there were some solid years. Yeah, anything with pop punk that was slightly heavy was easy core. So for the longest time, you'd be like, yeah, pull the curtain. It's my friend's easy core band. Then I'm like, we're not even slightly close. It's definitely um, <laughs> 2000s pop punk, emo, whatever you want to call it. Just not easy core. So when did, um, when did the band get formed? Um, I've been working on these songs for a while now. Um, so I guess 2020 is kind of like our first year as a band. But things were definitely in the works last year, 2019, where we spent, you know, most of the year recording and running around and looking for inspiration to write lyrics and whatever. Um, but uh, we didn't really, you know, get things off the ground until 2020 when uh, we released our EP in February. So 2020, my final answer. Thanks, COVID, for ruining that. Thanks. So, Vince, tell us about um, some of your influences and... Uh... You're, you're getting into the band. Oh, so um, I actually wasn't going to join the band originally. Um, one of my friends mentioned to me that, oh, hey, my friend Richard has a band that's recording a music video and they need somebody to fill in for bass. Do you want to do it? And I was like, nah. And I said no like five more times. And then eventually I was like, okay, you know what? Fine, I'll do it. I'll do it. And then we got together and practiced, and then eventually just joined as an official member. And then, fun fact, five years ago, when I was, like, in high school, Richard a actually asked me to join this band, and then he, like, auditioned me in the whole process, and then he was like, wait, how old are you? Oh, wait, you're 15? <laughs> nah, never mind. Not about it. <laughs> it's embarrassing that, like, I wasn't going to put myself out there, but I said 2019 when we started writing for this. If you really want to do that, yeah, I mean, I've been trying to look for people to start something since God knows how long ago. I mean, Vincent was like 15 at the time. Uh, 16, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, it, it takes a lot longer than you think to find people to, you know, make corny pop punk with. Now... Cole, how did you how did you get wrapped into all of this? Because I, I um, <clears throat> I know from privy information that uh, you were a later ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely true. As you know, people watching may be picking up. Uh, Richard and I are brothers, um. So there's that uh, element of how I got into it. But really, I was Richard's last choice, um. He spent forever trying to find people to do the band. And for most of my life, he hated my singing, in addition to just hating me. Um, <laughs> but so at a certain point, like, he didn't really have anywhere else to go. And so it was just like, do you want to do this? And I said no. <laughs> but then after a couple more asks, I said yes, kind of joined reluctantly. And... It wasn't until I was in the studio, like actually recording the first track that I was just like, all right, all right, this is it. Before that, you know, when we were writing melodies together and like rehearsing at Richard's old, old college, I was like, okay, this might be something. But when I started recording, I was like, this is the thing. So that's how I got involved. In my defense, nobody wants to hear all time low out of key, all time low at eight in the morning on a Saturday. So um, no, Colin was not my first choice. Nobody's like everybody wants to hear that. <laughs> I want to jump into a business or a project with my brother. Imagine a school project. Now imagine your brother being in that group project with you, but it worked out. <laughs> you know, it's 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 not. Uh, it, it's not an easy thing to approach, especially when making music with a family member. Um, I personally, I don't think my brother and I could start a band at all. Also, very different taste in music, different skill level. But um, but when you do get that connection, it's it's something else. Like I actually grew up playing guitar with my dad. And he played in like a jazz and like kind of classic rock and blues sort of band, and that's what got me into music in the first place. And so. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. We've been playing music uh, 23 years since I've been playing guitars together 23 years, and honestly, uh, it's like one of the best parts of my life. So you you may right now be butting heads a little bit, but when you look back 20 back 20 years from now, you're gonna realize that these are some of the best years of your life. So just a little 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 punky wisdom for you. <laughs> the dude from Good Charlotte made uh, made it work, so I guess you know we're next. Hopefully, Oasis too. You know, if we want to go outside, pop on. I just want to ask though, what's like the age difference between you and your brother? Only two years. Two years. Oh, okay, interesting. Because I feel like the reason why Richard and I have like similarish influences, even though like I like a lot of like math and prog stuff that Richard just is not familiar with, but we're kind of similar because we grew up three years apart in the same house, just like the same time period. Um, mm-hmm. So interesting that you guys are close in age, but like super different in, ta- in terms and of Like taste. drastically different interest in high school, you know, where I was hanging out, you know, doing in the drama club and in the art club and in the outing club and hanging out with the punks and the hippies and the metalheads. He was doing a lot of sports and stuff like that, which, which is cool, you know. But uh, so we had very different social circles in high school. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but which kind of brings me to like my next question. You you guys are very reminiscent of very, um, I would say, turn of, (laughs) it's interesting you use the term of turn of the century pop punk. (laughs) (laughs) The classical refined early 2000s of the pop punk era. But it's, it's true. You guys are absolutely reminiscent of a lot of those bands, but while doing something new and modern at the same time. Now, was it, cause it, you definitely like wear that, that classic sound right on your sleeve while doing your own thing. Was that like truly intentional to be reminiscent of uh, the old school days? 110%. I'm wearing a fall up white shirt underneath this, like right now. <laughs> um, Infinity on high. Um, yeah, I kind of, um, I don't know, like, I, I'm basically buried in nostalgia at all time. Like, uh, you know, I, I still listen, people talk about, you know, missing the early 2000s bands or whatever, or like, you know, I'll see pages like Ghost Killer Entertainment share, uh, um, share, you know, these throwback albums and music videos and whatnot. And for me, it's not a throwback. People like, you know, they'll say, oh man, do you remember this song? And I'm like, yes, it's on my like daily mix. I listen to this on a daily basis. Um, I don't know. I kind of grew up with this stuff and never like moved past it. I mean, sure, I'll listen to something more modern like Neck Deep, but like my love is truly, I mean, Sum 41, first of all, um, my favorite band right off the bat. I think my first introduction must have been like Spider-Man 1. You know, they had the end credit song, What We're All About. And uh, there's just something about that sound. There's something in the angst, the, you know, the energy. I like, I don't know, there's some, it caught me. And I just never let go of it. I like how every song sounds like it could be the soundtrack to a movie, you know, in which at the time, every song was on a movie song track, or at least all the big bands. Blink-182 was in American, uh, American Pie. Um, Fall Out Boy made their movie appearance at some point. You know, Simple Plan in a New York Minute. Um, I guess it was all around at the time. So like I said, Latch never got over it. That's that you, you really kind of like nailed it just right because I'm, I'm that same way. Like there are so many things from my childhood or even 10, 15, 20 years ago, which not quite my childhood, but I absolutely love and revere with all my heart, you know, like, and they're like, oh, do you, do you remember the song? You're right. Like, it's never, it's never left my rotation. I'm still listening to this. Like, I haven't stopped listening to this for 20 years. I haven't stopped listening to Bryce. I haven't stopped listening to Glassjaw. Nothing's changed in that regard. Yeah. If I find a band, really an old band that I missed, and then Spotify says, hey, do you know these guys? And I'm like, Armor for Sleep sounds dope, you know? Yeah. Wait, did you just get into Armor for Sleep recently? couple of years ago but you know oh okay i think i started listening to them in like middle school there was a website where i'd listen to music i think it was called like groove shark and i was like listening to me you know armored for sleep like way back then for any like old school pirates okay colin needs his clout now his emo clout i listened to that band before they were cool and nostalgic bro 
Dude, do you even know <laughs> Cap'n Jazz or Algernon Cadwallader? I do I have nothing to add to this conversation, and I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's bring it back around and then Vince, what are what are some of your musical or just even life influences? Um definitely like music influences. I'm very I love the early two thousands pop punk, but I'm more into the bands like My Chem and the Use and those are more like almost like more theatrical type bands. Like a lot of my favorites are like Get Scared and Motionless and White. So that just those types of bands overall. Um, in life, I think that like a big part of like what inspired me is just like it sounds like that sounds really weird when I say it, but like fashion and how I look. Because as we we're talking about before, being like a big scene key was a part of my life. I think a big part of that was just trying to like ex- express myself like aesthetically, and I think that like growing up and like maturing in that way has been kind of like a way to like kind of form me into who I am today if that kind of makes sense I don't know if that's weird no it does because obviously it's it's a different form of of self-expression and um it's it's an extension of who we are I mean some people you know they throw stuff on but some things it's truly an extension of who they are and their personality and just showing the world so that's that's an interesting um i don't hear that a lot on the show so do you do you do do a lot of that outside of um the band um yeah i've actually worked on a couple of new york fashion weeks in the past i did last fall and last winter um, as a social media um, a volunteer. So I would take pictures and create like, social media content for um, whatever company sponsors we have at the time. Nice. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, thank you. What about, uh, what about you, Rich and Cole, some of your other influences? Uh, for me, I kind of hinted before um, the movies, uh, growing up with those movies, you know, of course you always had Spider-Man, um, the Marvel movies, even though they weren't that great back in the day, but we're not going to talk about that. Still love Spider-Man 3. Never going to get over that either. Um, but yeah, I'd say movies uh, are a big one for me. Um, when I do a lot of my writing, I think about which scene in a movie this would be. Like, I have this one song in my uh, on my in- guitar pro right now, and it's like saved summer romance song, the song that plays at the end when the girl breaks up with you because you're moving away to college or something corny like that. And this is an actual song title on my computer right now um, because it just gives off that vibe. Um, So that's always been important to me um, and what I do with the music too. Uh, And then there's also the anime uh, that's just got a big part of my, like everything really, a big part of my identity. I grew up with a lot of, uh, you know, anime and comic books. I'm really into Spider-Man. And a lot of the U.S. stuff, I read, you know, the Avengers and stuff like that. But, like, 99.9% of my knowledge is, like, you know, the Naruto plot or, like, all the hand signs that we have to bring somebody back from the dead or something. Um, So I'm really, you know, deeply rooted into anime as well. I just say art in general. As corny as it sounds, my parents' paint, my parents' house is, like, full of my paintings. Every room, Colin still has a painting in his room right now. He probably took it down because it was cringy. We're not going to go into that. Nobody needs to know, Colin. I'm just saying it's out there. <laughs> and I, I think that's important to have all these different influences. And, in, and you're right, just to be like this, just everyday art in general, you know, you find all these different things that charge you, that build you up, that make you feel more like yourself, you know, let it be through anime and manga or comic books or even, even through movies. And I, I really like that you go into a song with actually not just trying to like, oh, here's a series of events, but I'm actually trying to encapsulate like an absolute emotion of, of a situation, situational emotion, and trying to put that into a track. I think that's very interesting because that's kind of the way that I go through things um, as a songwriter, which is very interesting as a cinematic um, standpoint. I refer to like certain riffs or parts as like main characters and supporting characters and support cast and plot. Like, so that's really interesting um, that you go at it from a comparable angle. Richard, talk about the colors. Colors, what do you mean the colors? You mean the- No, the colors. 
Colors. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, this is going to sound weird uh, because as far as I know, I think me and Colin are like the only two people like this. But um, I'll write a song and then I, I, I'll, or I'll listen to a song and I'll see a color or hear a color. And then somehow, one way or another, I found that that colon was the same. So we'd listen to a track, and we're like, yeah, this is definitely green. And to anybody else, it yeah, probably sounds that. ridiculous, but yeah. I, I didn't know we were going to put that out there today. I was not prepared. I, I don't know. Is, <laughs> does, that ever, does that happen to anybody else besides us? or The guy from Water Park is the lead singer. Really? Oh, yeah. Everything's blue for him, isn't it? Yeah. Like a lot of their songs talk about colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I'm stuck in 2004. I, I, I know a song. I have checked them out. Yes. But. Water parks are pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. Like. God, that cheap just scared the, me. As far as pop punk bands go, pretty experimental. Oh man, that to to kind of jump back into that the um, experience audio waves as a color. Oh man, I believe I, the French have a term for everything, and I'm pretty sure there's a there's a term for that when you when you see almost a, a visual representation of an of an audio representation. I forget, but they always have beautiful words to describe those types of situations so well. Figures. But it's interesting that you make an an association for a color like that. I I I kind of do a thing where I just start set building in my head. So like the more I start listening to a song, like the more like the scene just further develops in my mind's eye, or I just, ex you know, these different like series of events. So. That, make, that makes perfect sense. Cause like, uh, again, back to what I was saying with the movies um, is a song to me, it's like, I kind of think of it. It's also, a, it's not just the emotion for that scene, but you could also look at it as a story, you know, so you can think of how it's going to end and you, you know, the feeling you want to carry throughout the song and how are you going to, you know, how are you going to get there? You know, you know how you want it to end. Like I wrote a song and I had the ending. Um, there's actually a new song, um, you know, song, I think it's song 11. Uh, the ending has this really big uh, dramatic finish to it. And I wrote that first. So I was like, this is the climax. This is the end of the story. And it's like Kevin Feige knowing at the end of Avengers Endgame, everybody's going to come back how do I get there? And, you know, that kind of helps you tell the story, basically knowing where you need to go, but where do you start and where are you going along the way, if that makes sense? So where you want to be. I hear exactly what you're saying. No, I do that all the time because I'll, I'll sit there and I'll be like, all right, I have this part, but I know it's the end of the song and I know that they're this note, this note, and this note, so I have these options for scales. So I'm like, how can I bridge myself to get to that point? I do it all the time. Yeah, definitely probably not, you know, you're, what you're saying to me at all, I, I, I hear you 110% with the songwriting process. That's, man, I just wish everything I did was like end game quality. That would be awesome. Oh, God, please, please. I know, I know. I feel that. That's me and Fall Out Boy, though. Um, if we're going to aspire to be anything, it's aspire to be Pete Wentz. Every day, I just want, you know, maybe 1% of his power. I pray to the emo gods that somebody's going to make me angsty enough to recreate from under the court tree. Like, every time I write a song, I go into it thinking, the lyrics need to be this fresh. It needs to be this catchy. And it never is. I'll tell myself that. Like, I do have a song. Uh, um, we have a song, uh, Just Be Yourself is the Worst Advice I've Ever Been Given. First of all, that right there, uh, the length, I was like, that that's you know that that's a a, a nod to follow up with there. I did that in, uh, on purpose because that was a song that I tried the hardest with with the lyrics. In my opinion, it's the you know it has the best lyrics. It's the most well written song on the EP. It's uh it makes you think more than the others in my opinion. But I know it's not Pete Wentz quality. It's not Fall Out Boy tier. It's my attempt at it, and I might like it that much, but we all know that. It's no fallout boy, it's no end game. <laughs> but we all we all have to start with our Thor Dark World. All right. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> we we have to get through our dark worlds in order to get to our end games. And every once in a while, you get an infinity war. 
Yeah. And Infinity. Yeah, we're talking about Endgame, and I'm like, why are we? I, we should have used. We should probably you should have used Infinity War as the uh, the comparison there because if you ask me, Infinity War was definitely the best out of the two. Once you throw time travel into anything, it's just kind of like, eh, okay, you know, it's like I, I don't know. It was a good film. Don't get me I, wrong. I think it's, I can see why you lean that way with Infinity War because it's more the cinematic movie it is it is it's i think it's a little bit more epic in the scale of we have a chance and then we don't have a fucking chance and then <laughs> paul rudd's this like hey this crazy fucking idea now we got a chance again but i yeah. i personally think that that infinity war hit different um heartstrings uh with the build-up of everything but it's it's hard to choose. It's hard to choose because that that final battle is just phenomenal. To see Spider Man swing off from Ant Man is like one of the best things in the fucking world. Do you remember that feeling in the movie theater when? Because I'm assuming you saw this opening night just like I did. Yep. Uh, do you remember that feeling that like the crowd, the 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 cheering? It was like more like a roar when everybody stepped from the portal and then Sam is like, "Yo, Cap, on your left." The entire theater, we all got up, we screamed. It was like, it, there was a riot right there in the theater. Like, we all lost our mind. Uh, and I'm still chasing that high till this day. And we we keep getting like, oh, we're going to have Black Widow. Oh, we're not going to have Black Widow. Oh, we're going to have Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, wait, just hold on. We're going to wait. Oh, wait, instead, you're going to get WandaVision for Christmas now, which was the announcement. It really, but, of course, we only get coming soon. There, It's like what? Uh, we have a couple, a handful of months left to the year. You can't say coming soon, 2020. It's that soon. We want a release date, you know? Which, which, like, you know like, is it happening this year or not? Cause I'm, I, I'd like to buy a ticket. Like, which, I'm which of the new titles are you most excited about for things that are coming up here? For the, all across the board for our Marvel fans here. Which oh, one do you think you're most excited about? I think, okay, so... I want to say Spider-Man 2. I'm sorry. Well, I'm thinking Venom 2 because I know that Spider-Man is going to cross over into the Venomverse, so that's its own thing. Um, I'd like to say Spider-Man 3 because Spider-Man is my favorite um, my favorite character, my favorite superhero, period. But uh, I really, I was really impressed by the first Doctor Strange, and I'm really excited to see what happens with the Multiverse of Madness because I know that somehow, um, I watch all these YouTube channels about this, and I feel like that might have something to do with the introduction of uh, mutants. There's actually an Easter egg in uh, the WandaVision trailer. There's a House of uh, House of M. Yep. Uh, no, the French wine. The Mustard M. For my yeah, bastardized yeah. French. I feel like House of uh, I'm sorry. The Multiverse of Madness is going to bring some things for us. Um, you know, a lot of things we've been looking forward to, like you know, the X Men or the Fantastic Four. Although I hope they just do my babies justice because while everybody's favorite superhero team is probably the Avengers, I've been an X-Men fanboy since day one. They basically any superhero who had a Saturday morning cartoon and yeah. that was Spider-Man and the X-Men for me. So like one wait, of the wait, first wait. things I learned how to play on guitar was the X-Men theme. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. What were you going to say, Cole? Is it true that Sam Raimi is directing the next Doctor Strange? That is I correct. Don't like, that I don't is like correct. MCU. Which, Wonderful. I do not like MCU, but I do love Doctor Strange and Black Panther. There's these rumors of, because for when Raimi was doing the Spider-Man franchise, supposedly Bruce Campbell was going to play Mysterio in Spider-Man 4. So there's a rumor that Bruce Campbell is going to play Mysterio in the Multiverse of Madness. I also saw that we might be getting Tom Cruise as alternate Iron Man in that in that reality because he was one of the first selections for Iron Man before they went with RDJ, which was the way better choice. I did not know about the Iron Man thing, though, but I do know about the Mysterio thing because I got to watch. I was reading about the uh, concept art for the movie, and, you know, Mysterio was like a throwaway joke for that movie. But, uh, yeah, I'm just hoping we get a, you know, Tobey Maguire appearance, maybe. Dude, if we get the, if we get the, ha, 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 like, <laughs> I would totally be okay with it. What, well, 
what about you guys? Any other Marvel movies that you're excited here before we got to uh, part ways? I honestly have no idea which ones are coming out soon, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, your answer yeah. is The Eternals. You're excited about The Eternals, because that's what I'm really excited about. I like, know that we were, we were so close yet so far, taken away from us way too soon. I don't know anything about The Eternals, so it's hard to get excited about that. But they're, also anything they're about the kind of what created all these different life forms across the universe. And I think it's going to explain why the X gene exists because a part of them is in everybody. And I think with the event of Endgame, with the cosmic radiation burst, along with what Wanda's going to do, I think that's how we're going to get mutants. Instead of House of M of no more mutants, I think this is they're going to do the opposite, and this is how we get mutants. I also have another theory because um, with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, they're playing around with, you know, military stuff, you know, um, and we all know that Wolverine got his start. He was created, well, in, um, I think it was Project X, right? Uh, no, that's a movie. That is definitely a movie. And they had the whole, uh, they had the whole Logan with Weapon X. Weapon X. Okay, yeah, it was uh, the Weapon X program. Um, and we know that uh, General Ross has been chasing the Super, for, uh, super Soldier formula Everybody's been chasing that formula. Um, I read the Ultimate X-Men um, not too long ago because I just finished Ultimate Spider-Man. That's, that's, that's a lie. I finished Ultimate Spider-Man in like uh, college. I just never got over it and just kept reading it um, as if college was that long ago. Anyway, long story short, the X-Men um, in Ultimate X-Men is revealed that Nick Fury uh, and the rest of S.H.I.E.L.D. accidentally created mutants. And there were a lot of plot holes with the Ultimate X-Men series, so who knows if that's really credible information. But uh, that's something they kind of like retconned there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they went along, you know, like that route where they have the Weapon X, uh, the Weapon X program is kind of like a defense, just in case the next time, you know, we have aliens like Thanos come out of nowhere. You know, Iron Man was always concerned with being able to prevent danger. He wanted that suit of armor around the world. What if Nick Fury accidentally creates mutants to protect the world, but instead so now he has a social issue because people want to hate on mutants? Or it's Mr. Sinister, who was in charge of that facility that was in making Wanda and Quicksilver. Yeah, I thought uh, I did hear something we, about that, about him being introduced at some point. or uh, Which would be awesome. I think it um, might have been Morbius, so I, I might be getting my, my leaks or my... my uh, there's, um, there's so much to keep up with on it, but I want to jump back really quick. You mentioned something about not even Marvel-related, but new tracks. I'm going to pull this right around. Uh, you guys working on a new album right now? Uh, I don't want to go ahead and say new album, but we are working on new music. I don't know when we're going to say, let's just release an album, but I know we're definitely working on new stuff. Um, we're definitely looking at releasing singles rather than albums. I feel like that's the way to go for us. Um, but hopefully one day we'll be able to say, hey, full length, you know, LP1, hopefully the first of many. Cole, Vince, anything to add to that? Um. I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll hype Vincent up because I know he, he doesn't speak that much for himself and <laughs> his many, many attributes, but uh, Vincent is a marketing major, um, you know, in college right now. And I will say like, that is the, one of the things that I think hopefully, you know, kind of like comes across in this band when you like check out our presentation, we're like really trying to like think about like what direction the music is, the industry is going in and all that sort of stuff. So to add on to what Richard was saying, it just kind of seems like albums for artists who like are not really there yet doesn't seem to be like the move so instead making singles releasing them and like pleasing the spotify algorithm so that the spotify gods may give us sweet sweet listeners and fans um you know definitely seems like the move forward so yeah definitely singles and there's some cool stuff there including uh including a, an interesting remix uh you know we won't say the genre but that is in the works well, it definitely sounds like we got a lot of great things to look forward to. We're 
you know, hopefully not dealing with the end of the world, but as I joking like to say, here we are in the midst of the end of the fucking world. What have y'all been doing in the midst of all of this right now? Well, um, <laughs> ironic, I was just posting about this. Um, I don't know if you cosplay, but I had my sights on a $1,000 Spider-Man suit from our <laughs> video. Um, the one with the moving lenses, like the homecoming suit. And it's like a grand. And I was like, no, I can't do it. I got to use this money to buy um, gear for the band, for all these shows we're going to be playing in 2020. Psych, we dropped the EP February 14th, March 13th, lockdown, the entire country. So we have not played. We played three shows as a band. Um, I bought all that gear for no reason because now we're not doing anything. Um, we're just writing. I mean, we're always writing because personally, like, I'm a really slow songwriter. I know Vincent can probably bang out a song in a couple minutes or an hour, a couple days. Um, I did spend like all of 2019 working on these songs. Um, and I think it was the lyrics that took the most time because uh, the lyrics, the vocals, they're not fake. Um, you know, it's not something to sound edgy. Um, I really, I saved these songs for a rainy day. Um, I do have some songs coming up. We, uh, I wrote some instrumentals um, along the more pop punk vein. So now, um, we're working on new music, but like the tone might be a little bit happier than previous release songs. So we have to figure out what we're going to do with that. I know Colin's really excited about one we just recorded last weekend. So he's all over the lyrics, thank God, because I don't know what to put there, like I said. But uh, we actually, we, uh, we, were, we decided to play around with the idea of a mix, uh, a remix recently. I know that... Uh, I stay in my uh, I stay in my 2004 bubble, and Vincent and Colin are really out there with their influences and their the bands that they listen. To. Or I shouldn't even say bands; I should say artists. Um, <laughs> I don't want to give, I don't want to give it away and say we're doing a song in this genre, but we decided to remix one of our uh, one of my personal favorites on the EP, uh, "Water Your Flowers." So we have a remix for that coming up. We just went back to the studio with uh, Chris Wiseman last weekend to get that going. Um, so there's a couple things we're, we're working on there. We're working on the music. We want to release a lot of music in the next year or two. And uh, I want to stop stalling. I want to make TikTok. Uh, <laughs> we want to get on TikTok. We want to start doing that. Uh, Vincent's been saying, dude, just post it. And I'm like, people are going to tell me it sucks. I don't want to do it. But um, we're definitely looking towards just keeping things going. Um, we're all business majors, uh, minus Colin, but he's like an econ major, so he's like right along the vein. Um, the way we see it is the world is changing, and we just have to like change our approach to this. Uh, you know, business and marketing is something we talk about a lot, and like we're sitting here looking at the Oracle thing with TikTok, and we're looking at these companies and what's going on. Uh, even though we're like we're musicians, we're supposed to only care about you know um, playing shows and writing sad songs, but we're looking at this stuff. And we're like, how is this going to change the industry? What are we going to do now? Um, so it doesn't look like shows. Everybody would like to say, we're going on tour next week. Buy a ticket. We don't, I don't see shows happening for us. It's really the music that we're working on. And hopefully uh, a lot of uh, an increased effort to put out more online content. So hopefully people will be hearing a lot more from us online. I think the others could agree, right? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, show shows just aren't shows are really fun like the first time i did a show with the band was the first time i did a show at all and richard was like you see richard richard was like oh you see colin doesn't want to you know be in a band or whatever but he loves it you know he says he doesn't want to but he loves it he loves playing on the stage because i did but i i agree with richard wholeheartedly i think even if COVID didn't happen, the way that music was moving forward was just like a lot of it is online. Um, and personally, like Rich mentioned, Vincent and I look outside of rock a lot because we like a lot of stuff. Um, and one guy who I'm really impressed by, is, his name is Aries. Another guy is um, still Woozy, who's very popular. They're both people who like basically built things up online and they'll do shows sometimes, but they built up this huge following online and they've reached all the people they wanted to without the financial risk of a show because touring is expensive and touring gets you into debt. Um, you know, whether you're on a label or not. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've no bands that head out for, you know, even a two or three week tour and it just financially crippled them, you know, especially if, um, 
there's so many different factors that could go wrong at a show. And especially if you're, you know, if you're doing it yourself and then you're roughly dependent on like merch sales in order to be successful to get to the next place, it can make it really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not that, you know, these things aren't things we'd like to do. Um, Cause again, I work uh, a boring IT job right now. I'm definitely not sitting. I never, I didn't grow up dreaming about sitting at a, sitting in an office. You know, I was dreaming about drawing Spider-Man and going on tour but, you know, with the way COVID is in Ottawa, everybody's in school with the exception of me, old man over here. Um, I just finished. Um, everybody's still in school. So uh, no tours for sure. Uh, actually, I'm not even going to say that. Hopefully one day when COVID ends, spring break tour. But uh, in the immediate future, the way things are right now, yeah, I'd say the internet is where we will be. Rip. <laughs> That's a good place to honestly get your get yourself out there, introduce to a new audience, and then slowly build it. You know, I I remember, you know, doing this 10, 12 years ago, and we didn't have the web presence that we had and just had to go to a new area and hoping and expecting that you're going to be able to penetrate that area well for a new city, which you name has never been heard for. Now mm -hmm. you have all these different options, connect with different groups and stuff like that to get your music out there and be able to build up a following even before you hit the road. And I think that honestly, it's playing it safe, but it also, it gives you time to experiment and take different risks with your music, really hone in on it. Because something, it's a theme that comes up all the time is that when you're out doing shows, you have this small finite amount of time to actually record and focus into new songwriting. And I don't think any of us could have ever expected the downtime that we're going to get this year. That's you a great point. Yeah. You return a, a lot. You think there'd be like, I don't know, everybody could be like, oh, I'm going to write so many songs during this quarantine. All right. <laughs> let's do an album. All right. We all know we binged a lot of Netflix. All right. Yeah, that's about it. We probably binged a lot of Netflix. Don't lie. I don't want anybody to say that they were so productive and I, I screwed up, right? I feel like we're all in the same boat here. I'd like to say I recorded an entire album during COVID, but um, which technically COVID isn't over, but I did not get as much done as I thought I would. Feel that? <laughs> I definitely feel that. I uh, Before I started doing the show, I was working on um, pushing out my new album and like, the first 45 days of the of the lockdown, I um, I wrote 30 tracks in 45 days. Wow! Um, now I've I've honed it down to 12, and then a set of six for an EP that I'm doing separately. Um, so I managed what I liked out of there. I managed to pull 18 out of 30 of them. I'm like, all right, these are actually good. But I was I was getting up every day, 9 a.m., 9 to 5, in front of my computer, all my instruments everything there and just focused and i treated it like a job because i didn't know what the fuck else to do with my downtime yeah so. you, you, you did way better than i did but at the I same time good. even if you come out of this if you're even as an artist or any way shape or form visual artist painter even if you came out of this with a brand new perspective like it's almost like there's right now there's an artistic renaissance that's happening around us of everything that's happening socially and I think um, some people are going through that metamorphosis, shedding their old skin and coming into a brand new perspective and maybe a different understanding of the world around them that they didn't previously understand and perceive um, to the utmost degree. I hope so. It seems like a lot of this stuff is episodic, though, unfortunately. Like, it seems to me I, I, a lot of people, you know, when it was popular to post infographics on your Instagram instead of selfies, people were doing that. And then once it isn't, you know, it stops, you know, do people really question and people are like, yeah, you know, we shouldn't shoot black people on the street, but do they question, you know, how does, how does capitalism and, you know, an unsatiating thirst for, um, for consumption, right? How, how does that play into that? Right. Um, and e again, even on the news, when we talk about, you know, black lives matter, we're never going to talk about like capitalism and exploitation and, you know, those sorts of practices. And until we do that as a culture and as a society, like, I fear that a lot of this growth is episodic, you know, and like a sitcom, you know, you learn something new and you're supposed to change, but by the next episode, you're right back to being exactly who you were before because you need to confine, you know, each arc and everything into like one episode so you can keep watching the next one without, you know, having to have watched the previous one, right? that terrifies me because I think a lot of political progress is like that. It's very temporary. It's very fleeting. 
that that's you know you really hit it because it does <clears throat> you're looking at the different trends that are happening socially it's <clears throat> you would hope it'd be a linear storyline where this one event transpires to this next one to inspire the next movement. However, it's kind of this serial response where you kind of reach in, grab a handful, and like, oh, this is what it is, and then you're on to the next one as compared to people actually keeping the momentum going, which is huge, which is what desperately needs to be done right now more than anything, especially here in the United States. I concur. I, I couldn't agree more. So what about you, Vince? What have you been doing with um, this time in between? Um, personally, I've been um, just trying to kind of – I'm trying to write a lot of music, but like Richard said, it's been kind of hard. I've got a couple songs that are like on the back burner, but you know how it is. Like, oh, I'm going to start one idea and then never touch it again, and then I'm going to keep starting like more and more ideas. So I just have like seven tracks like on Reaper that I just have – that aren't, aren't done yet. Um, I'm also trying to just learn more about um, just the music industry and business as a whole. Like like Richard said, um, me and Colin are still in college, but I'm a marketing major at the University of Connecticut. Um, so I'm just trying to learn a lot of like marketing, but I'm also trying to like hone my focus into like the music industry to try to like learn things that could apply for this band to try to like move us forward. Well, that's awesome. That's definitely. It sounds like you all, despite everything happening around us socially, have stayed very positive and very ambitious throughout all of this. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. Man, whew, you guys are an inspiring bunch. And it's it's amazing to be able to connect like this with, with people all around the world. So I want to I wanna thank you all, Pull the Curtain, for coming and hanging out with me tonight. Cause that's unbelievable i never know where these conversations are going to go but i'm always just so humbled at the end of it i'm just like this is amazing you know as i get a new perspective uh meet new people and the sharing of ideas so first of all thank you so much for what you're doing because it's incredibly important and i'm glad that i could um honestly take a few moments to be able to share what you're doing with everybody all around the world thank you for having us yeah of course thank you so yeah, much for having you. us no, straight up you guys are always welcome here don't be strangers at all you know, we're trying to try to be one big, just completely off the wall family, as most families are, you know? Okay. So, as where, Rich um, and I can oh, what was that, Cole? I'm sorry. As, as, as Rich and I can attest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we definitely can see, you know, the, uh, the brotherly love right there. You know, man, I couldn't imagine starting a band with my brother. I think we would butt some serious heads. You remember that last resort comment? Yeah. Oh, trust me, I did. <laughs> I had braces for seven years because Richard destroyed my teeth. Like we butt heads a lot, actually. My We're not doing this. We could do this all day, but we're not doing it here. <laughs> Nothing but bro let's get the brotherly love back in there. Come on, <laughs> hold, let's hold the curtain on that. On, on that, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> <laughs> but so. Honestly, even even with being brothers, you can see the love between you, you know, and it's it's um it radiates through, you know. It's you're doing good. You guys are doing good, and it's definitely I am so excited to see what happens next for the band because I was already blown away by the EP and the presence that you've already done within a year. Nevertheless, where you're going to be two years down the road, so definitely keep up the momentum. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. So we're going to check out a little bit more of the EP tonight. And um, for uh, the mixtapers that want to look a little bit more, where can we find your music online? We're basically anywhere that um, distributes music other than, uh, you know, anywhere you listen to music aside from Pandora. I don't know what you have to do to get into the Pandora club. I know that uh, Trapped is really proud of being a, a member of that club. We can't yet, though. But Spotify, Apple Music... Google Music. I know that might not be a thing for much longer, but for now it is. We're there. YouTube, of course, Tidal, Deezer. Um, applications and platforms I've never actually heard of, to be honest. Because TikTok. Hmm? Yeah, TikTok too. Um, that's another one. You know, Spotify might be like number one. Here, but the other platforms are out there in other areas where people are listening to music on different applications. So um, wherever you are, um, there's a good chance that you might find Pull the Curtain there because there's a long list of applications that uh, we are, uh, our music is featured on. That's awesome. So 
We're going to hang out. We're going to check out a bit more of the EP tonight. My guests have been Richard, Vincent, and Cole of the band Pull the Curtain. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's been a great time. And we'll talk soon.